In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the sizes and types of 8020 that I've been using on this van build. So, let's get started. As this van build's been going on and on, I'm getting more and more comfortable with using extruded aluminum to frame my cabinets. Um, I always am calling it 8020 because 8020 seems to be kind of the Kleenex brand of the extruded aluminum world. I'm actually not using 8020 branded extrusion. Mine is by a company called Item. Primary reason I'm using Item over 8020 is just the availability. I can, there's a local supplier here that I can order from and they do stock some of the more common pieces like the, this is the 30 series open slotted all sided. And then, you know, stuff like the 40 series where, you know, there's one closed side. So I'm using item extrusion, not 8020. I call it 8020 because that's what most people are familiar with is 8020, but it's actually just extruded aluminum. When it comes to using extruded aluminum, one of the things that I struggled with the most at the start was just figuring out what pieces I needed to be using. And I've got some, some of those pieces here that I grabbed out of the back to kind of show you. There's two profiles that I'm missing. One of them is the angled 45 piece that I'm using on the front rail for my upper cabinet. And then I'm using this other trim piece for my sliding bed, which I'll show you that as well. But I've got, I think, all of the other basic profiles that I'm using. So you can kind of see which profiles ended up going with. And that should help you because going through the entire catalog of extrude aluminum on the 8020 site or the item site is very overwhelming. So what sizes did I use? So I'm going to be talking in the metric system because I am in Canada. So I'm going to be using in millimeters. So I used the 30 series and the 40 series primarily. That means that the dimensions, this is the 30 series. This dimension here is 30 millimeters square. And the bigger stuff is 40 millimeters square. So I, some people use the 20 series, which is the smaller than this, and it's probably strong enough. I mean, everyone else, it's, it seems to have no problems with it. The issue is that a lot of people I read, they were complaining that the fastener sizes and the T-nets that you use on the 20 series, they're difficult and cumbersome to use. So a lot of people recommended going from the 20 series to the 30 series size, just because the weight and cost is almost negligible and the fasteners are much easier to work with. So the majority of all of my cabinet framing in this van is with the 30 series. That includes the galley, the wardrober. Um, I guess that's really it. And then the other aspects, which is less, my upper cabinets are made out of the 40 series. I just wanted it to be insanely strong because it's not really supported from the bottom of the van. And same with my bed. The bed is made using the 40 series profile. So those are the two profiles that I'm primarily using. And so far, if I was to do it all over again, I think I would do the exact same thing. A couple things to note when you're looking at the different profiles is, this is the open on all four sides, 80-20, extrude aluminum. And then this is the, this has a closed face. So on pieces where you open a cabinet and you're going to see the extruded aluminum, I like to make sure I order a closed face. And same with corners, like on my upper cabinets, I did a piece that's closed on two sides so you don't see this channel. You can get these covers that actually like will plug this slot up. Um, and I'm gonna be putting LEDs in one of them with like the cover over top. So that's just one thing you kind of have to map out is which, which openings do I need based on my construction. The two other profiles that I'm using that are kind of unique is this profile here, I don't know what it's exactly called. I'll link it below, but I use this on the bottom of my bed just to reduce the overall like thickness and appearance of the 8020. Um, this is just a scrap piece. 
Um, I don't know the exact profile, but it does appear to have the same channel. Yeah, it looks like this takes the 40 series fasteners, the T-nuts. And then the last kind of profile I'm using is this uh, profile here. And I'm using this for my bed slide system. It's a super strong profile. It's three inches tall, which matches the height of the slides that I'm using. And just gives me a super strong cantilevered bed system that I didn't need a support leg for. That was kind of the goal. So I'm using heavy duty drawer slides paired with this. And that seems to be doing the trick. Again, it's not done, but those are the primary profiles that I'm using out of this entire book is just 30 series, 40 series, a couple oddball ones, and it's coming together great. The last thing I'm going to kind of touch on is the fasteners for this. So the fasteners that I, there's two fasteners that I like using the best. One of them is the automatic fasteners, which I've touched on another video, and I'll link to that video kind of up above. I think it's up here. So the automatic fasteners work great. And then I'm using basically these 90 brackets. The 90 brackets also work really well. The bolts that I'm using, I started out using the, these sort of, I don't know what they're called, con, is it convex, concave? I don't know, they go like this. Uh, and custom making my brackets, it was kind of a pain in the, so I ended up switching from those fasteners to the same fasteners, but using this other head. I switched the head that I was using. It's a lot easier to use. And I'm using mainly M5 and M6 bolts. So I got a combination of T-nuts, which are the T-nuts are what slide in the channel. So you need specific T-nuts for the 40 series and the 30 series channel because they're different sizes. They fit perfect. So I needed two different sizes and then I got M6 and M5 sizes. So it's actually four different styles of T-nuts that I got depending on the application. I'll, so again, all of that information with the profiles I'm using, you can find it on our website, which is thewonderful.co. I've got my full van build guide up there. It's currently my first van, but I am going to be updating it with all the information from the second van, which includes all the 8020 stuff, the fasteners, the in-floor heat, all that information you guys have been asking about. So make sure you check that out. If you made it this far in the video, click that subscribe button there for me as it'd be much appreciated. And we'll see you in the next one.